Hello everyone and welcome back to my let's play of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. And today I feel like we're going to be able to find like the last clues. Of course I'm not uh, entirely sure about that. But the uh, first thing we have to do is set up an experiment. I imagine that one of these plants would be capable of releasing a toxic vapor. I need to find out exactly how it could be done. I shall begin now. Watson, if you are at all optimistic to have dinner this evening, then I'd recommend that you put on the gas mask. Okay. Um, somehow I doubt it's going to be this plant. But uh, let's start with the Carlina Inebriare. Uh, this is a strange and unusual plant. Uh, yes, it is. Oh. No reaction. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? We have the bin. We have the liquid. It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. Hmm. It closed again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. I think I so wonder too. What secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater extent whilst it is opened, it will reveal a little more. Okay. So we opened it with this stuff. So it what appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. Okay, so what if we just stab it? It closed again. I believe I saw a small cloud of gas. I wonder what secrets this plant is hiding. Perhaps if we agitate it to a greater extent whilst it is opened, it will reveal a little more. Okay, so there's one more thing we can try. It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. No reaction. Okay, so that doesn't work. So what if we just take it and switch it with this one? This plant seems to have had no reaction from the caterpillars. Oh, but the other one ate it. Um My word. It shot a spike at me after I stabbed it with a pin. I imagined that its reaction would be ferocious if I increased the strength of my attack. <laughs> do those plants actually do those things actually, you know, exist? Well, I guess so. This plant becomes inactive after being drenched with alkaloid. Hmm. Toxic gas with spores. Extraordinary. Okay, interesting. Bit, bit the weird. would be capable of killing only if they were directly next to the victim and stimulated at precisely the right moment. Let us take our caterpillars to the colonial collection room. We may see things more clearly there. It is too early, Watson. Our suspects will be there. Let us investigate Kew Gardens one more time and ask some questions. Yes, because um, I actually overlooked something at Kew Gardens. 
because I've been, uh, you know, also watching a, a let's play of this game and, you know, I basically watched the parts that I just did. But apparently I overlooked the, uh, the statue. It was in a fairly obvious uh, place. Well, not really, but I, I did overlook it. Wait, what is the new one, this one? The knowledge Miss White acquired at the university might not be enough to guarantee the correct reaction of deadly plants, or Miss White had the biological knowledge to stimulate the deadly plants. Yeah, I don't see why not. Because it was also like with chemistry and didn't she have something, uh, some degree in chemistry? Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. Hmm. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. And why were you late? We shall continue our investigation. But, uh, let's find that statue. I can't remember exactly where it was. Uh, no, not in here. But here. And look, it's missing uh, I'm curious if the a part. Here it is. The marble fragment that we found in the colonial collection room is what they have in common. Okay. Well, that's uh, good to know. Oh, there's more to examine. It is a bust of Montague Dunn. Okay, so we're done with that. So what did that do to our evidence? Okay, so I have to talk to somebody about that. Wait, I'm, I'm here already. I might as well uh, talk to Miss White. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. Hmm. Okay. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could. For I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. 
I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. They seem... She and um, uh, Hamish seem to be very accurate about the time. But you say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Oh, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. Uh, thank you, miss. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get that done. I still feel like it has something to do with the uh, air uh, air regulations, stuff like that. Um, Three hundred and twenty. I don't hear anything. Yeah, there isn't really anything to hear. Here it is. Cylinder record. Okay, let's uh, let's listen to it. This recording seems very long. It is unnecessary to listen to all of it. Miss White was in the laboratory, as she told us. Okay, that's uh, that's good to know, I guess. So, what do we need to do? Maybe we need to go back to the uh, Divine Syndicate. There is a bust of Montague Dunn in the nursery. A bust? Oh, that old thing. Further proof of that outrageous ego of his. But why in that room, in particular? Oh, I, I don't know. It has always been there. Really, because we found a fragment from a statue. It is strange, because I recovered a fragment of the bust inside the colonial collection room really oh well so i am mistaken it ought to have been removed during the cleanup this room is so small hmm do you know who moved it i have no idea surely mr dunn requested it do you have any more questions like this because fragments of rock are not my responsibility evidently well, he Thank seemed you, to be a, a little we bit uh, defensive about that. Okay, Albert. Your father's death do does seem say? highly suspicious. What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious? Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of, uh, like, say, uh, something, or... or Lear, Pontus, or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard... Okay, they're all kind of accurate. 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. Hmm. Maybe we have to check and that Mr. out Hamish as well. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at ten minutes past ten. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room, and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh, my God. 
Thank you, young man. We hmm. shall see you again soon. Well, let's check out that... Oh, or not. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear. So... Okay, I'm done with the... Uh, investigation, apparently. Okay, then he escapes the room, and nothing else? And then he collapses. When Montague Dunn was standing close by the plants, the caterpillars were released and caused the deadly spores to activate. Panicking and likely already half asphyxiated, Montague Dunn started back and knocked over the bust. He rushed to the door, but it was locked. He had to force it open with his shoulder. We already know the outcome. Montague Dunn collapsed and died not far from the pool. Well, it is time to perform our experiment on the ventilation system. Yeah, probably. Uh, ventilation system, uh, which was in the back somewhere. But how do I get there? Oh, yeah. First of all, I need to visit the colonial collection room to see how those caterpillars drop Ugh. off into the deadly plants. Okay, fine, fine. Back to the stupid colonial dry collection dry room. Tropics. Yes, I know it's dry tropics. Just go through the door, Sherlock. Yeah, like that. The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. Watson, stay here and observe. All right, Holmes. Uh does this do? Is there anything in particular? Doesn't look like it. I still don't know why that uh, dry tropics. Why that room was actually Still don't know why or who or why that room was cleared. Oh wait, I guess uh, it was stolen by the um, you know the tree huggers. Uh, the power. power is on. The engine cannot. The engine has stopped. Uh, no. The power is off. The ventilation system is working. Okay, good. So that's just to show me where that thing is, I guess. The 
According to this, they have light and moisture control in some parts of the building. I know. Well, Watson, what's the situation? Now we need to see if we can activate the fans from Mr. Hamish's and Albert's space. Now we need to see if we can activate the fans from Mr. Hamish's and Albert's space. Uh, no, they're still in there. This is not Albert's space. Well, it doesn't look like you can activate it from here because there is nothing, well, A task list for Albert, compiled by Martin Hamish. Sweep out the palm house, scrub the toilets, clean the storage shed tools. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything we can do from here, maybe outside. Oh no, wait, uh, of course they mean their, uh, their offices. Excellent. This ventilation fan is working. Let us see if I can activate the other one. Uh, I'm not sure which other one you mean. One in here, question mark. Or the one in here. Perfect. Now I just need to find Watson to check the result. It works perfectly, Holmes. Bravo. Now if you could just help me to get rid of these cats. Watson. Perfect. Now we know how the murder of Montague Dunn was carried out by activating both Albert's and Mr. Hamish's fans. But only from Mr. Hamish's workplace would it be possible to see when Montague Dunn entered the colonial collection room. Oh. But Watson, why were you standing right under this thing? You could also see it working, you know. If you were standing over here. That way you could find out the results and not be covered in caterpillars. So, let's see. Deadly precision and ventilation used. Martin Hamish had the opportunity to stimulate the deadly plant in the colonial collection room. As a biologist he would have understood the technicality of how to do this. Uh, I guess that's true, but... That conflicts with uh, this one. I don't know, it's. it might be wrong. Can I actually find out more? This. The Divine Syndicate left the plants at Kew Gardens in order to murder Montague Dunn at a later date. Or someone stole the deadly plants before the Divine Syndicate were able to. I think... Uh, I think so. I don't think the sect is involved. Martin Hamish could be the killer. He had the opportunity to steal the Divine Syndicate's plants and stimulate them from his workplace. Directly after he had locked Montague Dunn inside the Colonial Collection Room. I guess it's possible. 
arrest Mr. Hamish. But we still have clues left. So... It seems to be a little bit... Let's go to Scotland Yard. Let's not. Because we still have... Stuff to deduce. Oh, what's this? Elk is not very good at botany, it, doubt, it is doubtful that he could have learned how the plants might release their deadly spores and Albert had to buy up. Yeah. Albert is totally inexperienced in that. Um. Yeah, I feel like it's, uh, it's Hamish. Do we have stuff to check out? No, we have found out everything, I guess. Although... You know, why would he do that right now? Because Miss White has the... I don't think Albert, you know, he doesn't have the knowledge. But Miss White was just fired. So I guess... It's possible. Lestrade, where are you? No, you're Watson. Inspector Lestrade. Inspector, I believe that Martin Hamish is guilty of the murder of Montague Dunn. Aha! I knew it! I'll send the lads around to arrest him. Very good. I shall wait to hear from you. God, another loading screen. Okay, let's see if we have something interesting to see in here. Most likely not. Can I find some... Margaret White. Yeah, I kind of want to see what, you know, what the degree she had. Uh, what that was. I came here as quickly as I could. Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. Oh, is he dead? Holmes, my God! Yes, we found him like that. Our messing around with the ventilation system didn't go unnoticed. Mr. Hamish realized that we knew. Inspector, could you arrange the body, please? I should like to examine it. Hmm. Uh, at reserve? What is reserve? What is reserve? Oh, here. <laughs> okay. What's this? A letter. 
Life has become a living hell. I found it unbearable, don't deserve to die, but I cannot forgive myself for having his blood upon my hands. We Hamishes seem to have always fallen victim to our circumstance, and I find myself to be no exception. I must be I must atone, and I shall do so here and now. Farewell. The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. How the hell did he get up there? Two different shoes? This left shoe is unique. This anomaly is often a characteristic of a club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So this means Martin Hamish was unable to run due to the tibial torsion on his club foot. Therefore, we should find out if he had sufficient time to lock the door of the colonial collection room and activate the ventilation system. Did he have an accomplice? Talk to Lestrade. Well, that's not so difficult. He is uh, right over here. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? Because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But, Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the colonial collection room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it, taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Yep. Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter, and so the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. I have another idea, Inspector. Thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild oh. the events as they took place. Oh, because I completely forgot it. <laughs> with a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. Okay. Let us analyze the facts and oh. statements so that we may recreate the events of that morning. Uh, so, Martin Hamish and Montague Dunn went to meet Albert in the seed house at around half past nine. I, I'm I'm working on the assumption that the color means I have to put them in these uh, in these lines. Um, it was around 20 minutes to 10 when Hamish and Montague Dunn went out to the backyard. Uh, Hamish. Oh, wait. So, that goes there. After 10 minutes, Dunn recommenced his inspection and entered dry tropics. So, that's there. And he goes back to the seed house. Martin and Hamish had a conversation with, with Miss White at 10 o'clock. Miss White was in the laboratory until 10.40 when she saw Hamish and Albert in the water lily greenhouse and joined them there. Hamish ran to Albert as soon as he observed that Montague Dunn was unwell, which was at around 10.30. Albert was in the seed house the entire morning. He observed Hamish returning from visiting Miss White. 10 minutes past 10. Uh, ok. 
Okay. Let us summarize. Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the colonial collection room. He forced open the door, which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room, which is quite enough time. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock, which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door, more than enough time. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. Okay. Um... I don't know, I feel like I'm really close to solving this case. But I'm also a bit out of time. You know what, I'm just going to uh, end it here and if it turns out that, um, you know, it's only like 10 more minutes after this, I'll just, uh, I guess, paste it immediately after this one. So uh, for now, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll speak to you guys in the next video or who knows, maybe in a few seconds. Anyway, bye.